you said these sentences uh, of the Four Noble Truths invite to inspection, but they they do seem uh, rather like a very definite. Um, okay, the reason, let me tell you, you want me to tell you why I said that. I, I didn't leave it in the document, I took it out, but it's, it's a discussion unto itself. In modern books, uh, you know, a great deal of what comes to us from Buddhism comes from uh, the, the folks who are teaching, including monastics, English as a second language. Now, you can learn a language to a certain degree, but then there are certain aspects to it that we, we, don't, uh, we don't get if we're not an English speaker. So what's happening in a lot of modern books right now is that the Four Noble Truths have been rewritten. So if you want to write it down, or actually, I can write it down for you on the chart here, so you can see what I'm talking about. There are two. There are two, two, um, two ways of looking at this. Okay, and here's the original one. Okay, um, there is suffering. Period. There is a cause. of suffering, there is a cessation of suffering, and there is a path to cessation of suffering. Okay, so that's the that's the original way. Got it? Okay. Now here's the new one. You ready? Life is suffering. Okay. Second one. The cause of suffering is desire. Third one, there is a cessation of suffering. Uh, but then over here they say uh, the, um, the way, uh, well, they say, okay, there is a cessation of suffering. They probably say the same thing. What did they say? There is a cessation of suffering. They left this one the same. I think they left this one the same most of the time. Yeah. But over here say that the, the, the way to the cessation of suffering is, ready, to desire absolutely nothing, okay? Now let's present the argument. If you say there is suffering, in English, both of these sentences have have periods after them, but there is suffering left is called an open-ended statement. It means if you say there is suffering, well, everybody knows there's suffering in life. There is suffering left it open for Siddhartha to say, well, if there's suffering, let's go find out what it is. However, what do you think would have happened if the priest in the temple in his kingdom, in his, in his family, family uh, priest had said to him, you know, all life is suffering, period, boom, like that. What if he had said that to him? The kid would have not done anything. It was just like, all this is going to be, all these people have to suffer. It's necessary. It's absolute. This is absolute. This is open for investigation. Next one, there is a cause of suffering. There you go. There is a cause. Let's go find it, he said. Let's go find it. I'm going to dedicate myself to finding out. Over here, they declared the suffering, and they made a big mistake here. This is a big mistake. Because why? Because there's two kinds of desire. You have It's a shaded word. There are certain words in all languages that are shaded with two sides, Okay. Wholesome desire is for you to succeed in your relationships, succeed in business, have a good family, your kids get good grades in school, you desire to do a good job, your intention and desire is healthy, 
okay? Desire for unhealthy sensual desire and all the wrong things on the other side of the track is the other side of the shade, you see? So by doing this, uh, they, they, I'll show you what happened in a second. All right, then the next one is the path to the cessation. There is a path to cessation. There is a way to this, is the only way, okay, I'm sorry, the, this is the only, it was printed this way, the only way to the cessation of suffering is to desire absolutely nothing. Well, all right, here's the deal. The average person in life is never going to get involved with Buddhism at all. Why the heck should they? If you told them that they have to desire absolutely nothing in life at all. Okay, this is ridiculous, right? It was ridiculous then, it's ridiculous now. But the again, you're looking at a shaded aspect here. The monastic who is in it for life and attempting to reach the super mundane Nibbana okay, is going to end up not going in the like or dislike direction. But the average person is different. You see how desire works. This is the same thing. You can't. So here's what happened. And the experience blew me away. A very close friend of mine had a 13-year-old daughter. And she finally convinced her to come to the temple with her in North Carolina, in High Point, North Carolina. And she went there. And the abbot he said the path this new way. He said it this way. And when they got to, um, you know, cause of the suffering is desire, when it said the person, the way to the way out of the out of the suffering is to desire absolutely nothing, she whispered in her mother's ear very clearly that she got to the temple with you this time, mom, and I did it because I love you, but don't ever bring me to this place again, because when I leave, I'm going to the mall to get my new shoes. To her, it was the biggest devastation on the face of the earth. To any teenager, you're going to chase the kids away. You're not going to have them come in at all. This is absolutely ridiculous because the lay people were not asked to do this. This was not part of the program. This was part of equanimity, balance, harmony is not to say desire nothing. So don't fix your roof. Let the rain come in. You know, let the cows come in the door if it gets broken. If the gate opens up in the past, you don't fix it. Why desire to do that? Let them run over in your neighbor's yard. What the heck? Do you see the problem here? So we went to this great big conference. This was about 2008 or something and sat at a table with some of the largest monks in the world. And we said, the only thing that we can hope for is that everybody at this table could agree to say the, the four noble truths in the same way and always say them in the same way. Never misunderstood like that. This is wrong. It is wrong. It is closed sentences with absolute statements, inviting no one to come and find out anything. But this over here, the tradition, don't be changing. It's like the little guy who comes like, don't be changing this. It's not going to work. <laughs> don't be coming here and changing this. This is good. It's just fine. The hammer hits the nail. The screwdriver turns the screw. Don't be changing that. You see? It's like a kind of comedy thing. You don't touch something that's perfect. And one of the things now is we're getting into the stages of the dilution of the Dhamma. And it is dilution of the Dhamma time. We are getting into the dilution of the Dhamma period where things are getting diluted. Oh my! <laughs> And we can't find a simple practice everybody can use. You see, that's what happened. So that's why I said that about the truths like that. See? And this new way, nobody's going to stop it. Because you know why? <laughs> There's no Pope in Buddhism. <laughs> that's it. Simple. You go to one place, another place, another country, another country. Everybody's got Buddhism, but it's not going to be the same exact thing because nobody has any control anymore. And once you have, an, uh, you have, I think this is from the uh, ask the uh, the angle of a meditation teacher. I think once you change the practice to the two components, taking them apart, and it didn't work anymore. 
So now look around you, check with about six or eight teachers, ask them how long it takes to become a Sotapanna. And when they tell you the answer, go back and read the last page of the Satipatthana Sutta. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna say, well, they were lying. <laughs> no, they're not lying. They're not lying. They had to make stories up to make it fit so everybody would think that it's impossible to become a Sotapanna in this lifetime. And that's just not real. But we're going to make the definition of the Sotapanna much more difficult so everybody believes us. Because after all, look at me. Do I look normal? <laughs> you know, am I just a normal person dressed like this? And you can go some places where if I'm dressed like this, they're going to believe anything I tell them. You see, and that's a crime in a way. It's sort of sad because not everybody asks questions. Not everybody thinks that the Buddha said to ask questions. Not everybody talks about knowledge and vision. They say, Sister Kema, they called me from Canada one time. Sister Kema, why are you teaching knowledge and vision? Don't you know everybody's talking about knowledge and wisdom? And I'm there, I couldn't believe it. They didn't know that you can't have knowledge and wisdom unless you have the foundation stone of knowledge and vision. They didn't know that. You see what's happening? It's all kind of going like that. And you, what the only way to do it is to encourage you, the student, to test what I'm saying. Like I should probably say, hello, how are you all? I hope you had a good week. I'm here to give you a lesson. Don't listen to a word I say. <laughs> test everything. <laughs> how is that? Is that being Buddhist? You bet it is. I can take you in the test text i can show you where he told them don't believe this but don't believe me <laughs> test everything i give you that's what i want you to do i'm telling you so i try very hard to show you what i find and what worked and how it helps other people but also i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not gonna just give you you i want you to go back and look come say well where does it say this where does it say that i'll tell you that's what i gave up some other books in my life where i was saying you know uh this book this verse <laughs> and now i'm sitting here with this saying you know this sutta this section go read it figure it out for yourself if you don't think anything remarkable happened to the Buddha, for instance, in, um, in 36, in, in that sutta, if you don't think anything particular really happened, significant, then go out and sit under a tree in a botanical garden for about four hours and see how you feel if you just lean against a tree by yourself and just sort of watch in your mind and see what happens, see what happens. Got to do it for at least an hour, don't stop, and just allow the tree against you to just connect with you and just see what happens. <laughs>